Sometimes I really struggle to get the words out. I experience what are called nonverbal or non-speaking episodes due to my autism, and I thought I would talk about what that feels like for me, because for a long time, I didn't realize that's what was going on. Hi, my name is Megan, and welcome to Neurodivergent Magic, the YouTube channel for accessible and relatable neurodivergent content. You might be thinking, how did you not know you were experiencing a non-speaking episode if you weren't able to speak? Isn't that pretty self-explanatory? Yes and no. You would think that would be pretty obvious, but the thing is, when you feel like you can't speak, there's a part of you uh, that comes from the internalized ableism from the world that says you really could speak if you had to, you're just choosing not to, to be difficult. Of course, in reality, that is not what's going on at all. You really genuinely cannot speak in that moment, but it feels like you could if you just tried hard enough. Or honestly, sometimes we have non-speaking episodes where we can speak. It's just really painful and exhausting and not very good for us. I want to start by saying that everyone experiences nonverbal episodes differently. So if you watch this and you're like, I don't really relate to Megan and what she's saying, but I'm pretty sure I've experienced non-speaking episodes before, then that's totally possible. Our experiences could be completely different and still be the same thing. For me, I remember non-speaking episodes starting pretty young, and it was always when I was intensely anxious about something. For example, I would have to ask my parents for something that I was pretty sure they were going to say no to, and I was so unbelievably nervous, I would pace outside of their bedroom door, just walking back and forth, rehearsing what I wanted to say over and over, my hands getting sweaty, my butt sweating, everything sweating, and just completely unable to actually knock on their door and ask. So those were some of my earliest nonverbal episodes, but my longest nonverbal episode actually came much later in life, which was actually just a couple of years ago. Again, it was during a period of very high anxiety. I was incredibly triggered by a TV show of all things, and it just really got to me and I couldn't speak for over 24 hours. I do think I spoke a little because I was living with my in-laws at the time and I didn't want them to know anything was up, and so I forced myself to speak a little bit, but mostly I just hid away in my room and uh, said nothing at all to anyone. For me personally, non-speaking episodes and anxiety are very closely linked. It's extremely rare, and dare I say, I don't think I have ever had a nonverbal episode that wasn't paired with anxiety. But I do know from talking to other autistic folks that some autistic folks do experience non-speaking episodes without anxiety. They describe it as feeling like their voice has been taken, and there's just nothing there. There's no way to speak. For me, it's more like the words are here, and when they get here, it's like there's an iron curtain <laughs> that just says absolutely not something will go horribly wrong if you speak. Or sometimes I'll be trying to say something and every time I think of something to say, my inner critic just shuts it down and says, no, that's the stupidest thing. Like nobody wants to hear that. That's the wrong thing to say. You can't say that. There's a couple of things that I think are important to remember when it comes to non-speaking or non-verbal episodes or non-speaking or non-verbal people. Because it's important to remember, not everybody experiences this episodically. Some people are, you know, for the most part, completely non-speaking. And it's important to remember a couple of things when it comes to a lack of speech. First of all, verbal communication is not the only form of communication. Body language is important, text communication is absolutely vital, and there are sign languages that we can learn to express our thoughts without needing to speak. Number two, lack of speech is not lack of thought. Just because someone can't get the words out right now doesn't mean they aren't thinking. In fact, for me personally, when I am nonverbal, it's usually when I'm thinking the most and the hardest. It's almost like, now that I say it, it's almost like there's too much processing going on and so the verbal part shuts down so that the brain can do the thinky part. <laughs> and finally, number three, we are not doing this to annoy you and it is not necessarily a choice. Personally, I feel like even if someone is choosing not to speak, you should probably respect that and communicate with them other ways. But I understand sometimes it can feel really frustrating when you're trying to talk to somebody and they're not talking back. 
It's just important to remember that we're not doing it to frustrate you. We're not doing it intentionally. It's just something that's happening to us the same way it's just happening to you. When it comes to non-speaking episodes, I think the best thing you can do is have a plan. Personally, I have a great plan with my husband about what to do when I go nonverbal, but I honestly can't take credit for it. He came up with it completely on his own. Because like I said, I didn't realize I was experiencing nonverbal episodes. I thought I was just being a jerk and not responding. But he noticed and he decided to take care of me instead of judging me. And so when we were talking and all of a sudden I would stop responding, he would wait a little while. And then if I still didn't respond or say anything, he would gently ask me, are you nonverbal right now? And usually I can sort of nod and then he would gently respond, all of the gentleness in the world, um, I'm here when you're able to talk again. And I can't tell you how much it means to me that that's our plan. That's what we do. What's your game plan for when you're non-speaking? Let me know in the comments. And as always, thank you so much for watching.